proud of this country. But our new slogan, when we start running in, can you believe it, two years from now, is going to be, keep America great, exclamation point, keep America great. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, well, you know what? That's... It's not even the worst slogan that I've heard of. It's not the, the, the greatest either. I mean, it's an okay slogan. But, uh, my mind, my mind can't comprehend Donald Trump uh, running again in 2020. I, I can't, I can't do it. I can't go there just yet. Not, not that he's been doing a terrible job, but he's, oh, he's so far from doing a great job as well. But um, I don't want to talk about how he's doing as a president because I'm sure I'll get all of the wonderful MAGA fans somehow to watch this video and get every single person's comment on how Trump is the greatest. But um, what I wanted to focus on were other... This, this is what happens. I, I start to say, oh, what are some other presidential slogans that have, that have been out there in the past couple of years? And so I started doing some research and... Uh, for all of you, I created this awesome PowerPoint presentation um, of the 14 best presidential slogans that um, are according to me, of course. So let's see if uh, any of these are ones that you like. Let's start off with uh, my man, William McKinley. Good money never made times hard. I mean, doesn't that sound like, like somebody that's about to do like an epic rap, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like that sounds like something the Migos should come out with, or Jay-Z, good money never made times hard, yeah, William McKinley up in the house, y'all, you can't beat that slogan, or how about, how about this one, from our, our, our great President Abraham Lincoln, vote yourself a farm, yeah, that, that, that makes perfect sense, Abe, vote yourself a farm. I don't even know. Some of these they actually gave like the background information to, but this one is obviously self-evident. This is when he was running for re-election. Don't swap horses in the middle of the stream. I mean, this sounds like it could be a song. Well, you don't swap horses in the middle of the stream. No, you don't swap horses in the middle of the stream. Now, now these, this, this next one, these next two, um, I don't know why you would make this your presidential slogan, but Grover Cleveland, uh, uh, this guy right here, uh, his, his, uh, his presidential slogan, and I don't know, I mean, again, I, I did not dive too deep into these things, but apparently his slogan was Blaine Blaine, James G. Blaine, the continental liar from the state of Maine. What kind of presidential slogan is that? Um, but of course he was going up against this guy, James Blaine, whose slogan um, was Mama, where's my pa? gone to the White House, ha ha ha. So I don't know in 1884 exactly how much skooma these guys were smoking, but these are the worst presidential slogans. Um, some of the other ones you have, my man Calvin Coolidge, AKA Sir Topham Hat, with keep cool with Coolidge. I mean, you can't get much better than that. You got uh, Barry Goldwater, who looks like a psychopath in this image right here. I mean, come on. And, and his slogan was, in your heart, you know he's right. Uh, no, in my heart, you look like you're about to kill uh, every single person you run into. One of my favorites, this guy, Nixon's the one. Yes, he's the one. Like, his slogan incriminates him. It gets no better than that. Nixon's the one. Or how about this one, Ronald Reagan. Are you better off than you were four years ago? I mean, this is, this is, this is awesome. This is probably one of my favorite ones. Because it's basically saying, hey, look, the, the last person did a terrible job. I'm going to do better, right? Okay? And then here's one of our favorite presidents, one of my favorite presidents, with the oxymoron of the year from the moron of, of all, all presidencies. Compassionate conservatism. It gets no better than that. And then you've got... This next guy who just completely slams his opponent, Henry Clay. He's like, who the hell is James K. Polk? <laughs> like, I, you can't beat that one. That's, that's an awesome slogan in my view. Like, like yeah, who's, who, who's my running mate again? You know, it's like, new phone, who this? Right? And, and then, here's my favorite one, and the fact that it's the funniest and the stupidest one in, in my mind. Um, sorry, Hillary, I gotta go with you. I'm with her. Like... So what, what did that mean? What did that really mean for everybody? Yes, you were the, 
I don't even think you were the first female running for president. I don't believe she was. I can't remember. I believe there was someone else before her. But, like, why? Like, do you, do you even have, like, a, a platform? It, that was worse than, you know, whatever. Uh, t Blaine, Blaine, he's good for your heart. The more you eat him, the more you fart. I don't even know. So, so that was, like, the worst slogan. Now... I'm going to go to my top two slogans, and they both come from the same president. And this, the number two slogan is, drumroll please, Calvin Coolidge, cocks and cocktails. Now, or I'm sorry, I said Calvin Coolidge. Why did I say that? Warren G. Harding. Warren G. Harding throwing out a baseball. And his slogan, one of his slogans was cocks and cocktails. And... I mean, it gets no better than that. The guy who was running against was um, against prohibition. Um, Warren G. Harding was for prohibition, so he didn't want people, you know, drinking and getting drunk and everything. So he basically made sure that he made this guy synonymous with, with alcoholic drinking and all that stuff. And the guy basically, I mean, we don't hear about him, but cocks and cocktails. I mean, come on. doesn't get any better than that. But the number one presidential slogan. And... I actually hope this slogan gets used in 2020 because it was used by Warren G. Harding in 1920. The slogan is return to normalcy. Please, whoever runs against Trump, just use this as your slogan and I will gladly vote for you because after everything we've gone through in just two years, what we really need more than anything is a return to normalcy! Exclamation mark! Three of them, four of them, five of them, six of them. That's all I've got for you all today. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on my MAGA fans. I know I'm going to hear from you the loudest, and I cannot wait. I will see you all tomorrow. Peace out.